All right, everybody, here we are with our problem solving task for our lesson. Um, the problem solving task goes pretty straightforward. Um, it's just asking you to do the same thing we were doing in our lesson from Tuesday. The only difference is now we have a coordinate grid as well in it. So it says, um, we're going to see points F, G, and H here, points F, G, and H on the coordinate grid. Which statement is true for all points on F, G, and H? So we just have to figure out which ones of those points are true, A, B, C, and D. So the first one says the x coordinate is one half the value of the y coordinate. The second one says the x coordinate is two times the value of the y coordinate. And then we have two more than the y coordinate or three more than the y coordinate. So really what we're asking to look at is the coordinate pairs. And it's really hard to see that in this problem the way it is. So the best thing you can really do is make a table of those points. So that's what I'm going to do right here. And I'm just going to make, um, and you, to, to do this, you can just kind of just write them out yourself, but I would do an insert and then table. We're gonna do inserting a lot today in the lesson. You can insert drawings as well. In this case, I'm gonna insert a table. I'm gonna make it with all the points on it. Now, so I'm gonna make one that's three long here, and four long, sorry, three wide. So the point go here, and then the X value, and then the Y value. You could also just do it with one thing, X and Y. That's whatever works for you will be fine. But here's point F, G, and H. Point F, the X value is zero, the Y value is zero, it's at the origin. Point G, the X value is at four, the Y value is at two. Remember X and Y are labeled on our axis. H, the X value is at six, the Y value is at three. And that's how I'll set up starting the problem. I'll move this down here so we can see. So the question is, which is true for all points F, G, and H? The Y coordinate is half, the X coordinate is half the Y coordinate. And if we look here, that doesn't make any sense. Half the value means it's one half the size, it's smaller. The X value is bigger than the Y value for all of them. So I'm gonna say no, delete it, it's not an option. Um, B, the X coordinate is two times the value of the Y coordinate. So let's look at each X, zero and zero. We can't really change those two. But for a point G, our X is four, our Y is two. So the y, two times the Y, so Y times two, two times two is four. Our next one, we gotta check all the points though. Our next one says the y is three, the x is six. Three times two is six. So that is possible. In fact, I'd say it was correct. Um, let's look at C. The x coordinate is two more than the y coordinate. Two more than something means you're adding on to it. So zero plus two is not zero. And, but two plus two is four, so it works for G but three plus two is six, it does not work for H. So it, just, it needs to work for all the points. It does only works for one of them. So C is out. Let's look at D. The X coordinate is three times more than the Y coordinate. Again, it doesn't work for the first one. Doesn't work for the second one. Two plus three, three more than, it's not three times, it's three plus. Three plus two is not four, it doesn't work. So the only one that works for all three points is B and that is the x-coordinate is two times by the y-coordinate. And that is kind of our rule for that um, problem. You also see on here, it says the vocab corresponding term. Um, basically what they're talking about here is, um, we're talking about corresponding terms in tables as we go down here. So I'm trying to think where that we find that. So a corresponding term basically is a value that matches another value. For example, an x with its, uh, an x and a y. So the x and the y that go together would be two corresponding terms. So that they, that's kind of a quick way of looking at it while you're working through. Um, and then go to kind of practice real quick. I'm going to actually move this up and make sure you have a lot of space to see this. Um, I'm going to be using the drawing tool on here. I just want to show you as you're going through kind of practice. I'm doing one problem, but just so you know what to do. It says use the following two patterns to complete parts A through D. The pattern for x, y, x coordinates is start at 0 and add 6. 0, add 6. Pattern for y coordinates is z, start at 0, add 2. 
So if I go through the table following this pattern, I just need to add six to each of these. It says fill out the table. Start at zero, add six, so it's six. Six plus six is 12, 12 plus six is 18, 18 plus six is 24. Go to my y value, zero plus two is two, two plus two is four, four plus two is six, six plus two is eight. And then I can quickly just write it as a coordinate and it's gonna be six comma two, 12 comma four, 18 comma six, and 24 comma eight. So you're gonna pick each point in the coordinate grid below, and then show you how to do this. Is use copy and insert, then insert drawing and paste. These are the steps. You can't draw on this as it is here. It doesn't let you in Google Docs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this. I'm going to copy. To copy, I can right click or I can control click. Either way, I'm gonna get a menu like this that pops up. Or you can even actually two finger click. So remember the three options are to click with the right part of the mouse, or to two finger click, click with two fingers in the mouse, or control click. When the press means press the button control and click. Either no matter what happens, you're gonna get this menu and then you have the option to copy. Copy the picture. Click out of it. And then you're gonna to go to the insert memo menu in Google Docs. Go to insert drawing. Let's show that again. Insert drawing and then gonna add new and then add a new drawing. Here it is. Nothing is in the drawing. What we're going to do is do the same thing. Click with two fingers or control click at the same menu or similar menu. So I'm going to click paste. When I click paste, my drawing shows up. I'm going to make it a little bigger so I can see it. And you can even move this around a little bit so you can see your screen. Um, it's not perfect, but oops, if I want to put those points on here, now I know I need to put in zero comma zero on here. So if I want to put in a point, I can just put a shape here. I can put a little shape, put a little circle if I wanted to. Um, so the first one is 0, 0. I can put a little circle on 0, 0. The second one we had was 6, 2. So I'm going to get another circle, like another circle at 6, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2. Then I'm going to do a, another one at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to go to 12. So all the way up here, 12, 4. And on this grid, that's as far as I can get. So you're going to fill as much as you can on the grid. 12, 4, that's all the way over here. And it says, the next question I'm going to get ahead of you, it says draw a line to connect those points. So this you can go to the line tool right here next to the arrow here. The line tool allows you to connect those dots, you can kind of see how it go up. It goes up in a straight line, okay? And what I see is that this is 0, 0, 12, 6, 2, 12, 4. Notice what's happening in the pattern because it can help us answer the next question. So I've done this, click, click enter, close out of it. Um, if I can close out of it. Got a weird line going on there. Um, oops, oh, maybe I can get this out of the way. Not helping. Click escape. Click outside the box. This happens to me on my computer for some reason. Turns out what I had to do to get that to work was just to actually close or refresh the page and that made it come back. So I've plotted it and I connected the dots of the points. Um, and that's all to the lecture that part the question. Part C says what part important pair with the sixth term in this pattern B? So if I go back to my pattern. I only get up to the fifth term, especially if you figure out the sixth term, I know I'm adding six, so 24 plus six is 30, eight plus two, because I'm going by two, is 10. So the sixth term would be parentheses, 30 comma 10, that's it. And the second one says, which of the following about the statements of the pattern above is true? The y will always be smaller than the x, so I'm gonna choose all of them. Is the y smaller than the x? It's gonna Here's the y. It's always going to be smaller. It's only going up by two. So that is true. I've just left all that applies. So that is true. The x will always be four greater than the y. That means four plus four bigger. Going back to my table. Note they are not all four greater than the y. They're, some of them are less and some of them are more deleted. 
the x is always three times as big as the y. Let's look at it. Every x, so 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18, 8 times 3 is 24. It does work. That is my rule works there. So option 3, the x will always be three times as big as y. It's in. The difference between x and y gets bigger as the pattern continues. Does the difference between these numbers get bigger and bigger? The answer is yeah, because 36 and 2 are only 4 apart. 12 and 4 are 8 apart. It's getting bigger and bigger as I go down. So that is also true. Three out of those four things, statements, were true. So the reason I showed you the first guide practice question is so you know how to edit and add dots and lines, as well as how to make a new table if you wanted to. That table will just help you if you're working this on your own and you're not in the class with your teacher. So this next question is a follow up after this fall. Ask the basically the same kind of question throughout the whole lesson, asking you to use those skills uh, with, with the tables and the graphs. Good luck. Have a great day and I will hopefully see you all soon.